Because here I can't just make it. The reason it works in Hollywood is that let people deny their existence. There are lists. There is an A list, there is a B list, and then there's an up and coming list, and then there's a blank list. And, you, you know, if your name's not on any of these lists, you're not in the game. This is a film called Chicago Joe. I directed it. My name's Bernard Rose. I'm Nick Rogue, and uh, this is an unusual place for me to be. It's a very tight club in Hollywood. And I've never been a member. I come as a guest, or don't, and then I don't um, try and join. But whenever you make an independent film, I mean, the difficulty is, uh, especially now, in distribution, because I say that the studio have their own product, and um, they're more interested in seeing that that gets out and is distributed. And the A-list goes, are the five or six people who they offer, the studios offer what they consider their best projects to, and they go through them in order. You know, they offer it to Sidney Pollack, he passes, they offer it to Barry Levinson, he passes, they offer it, it goes on down that list. Nobody's independent of that system, because you cannot be. If you're independent of that system, essentially, you're unemployed. And then I think there's a whole different category of, of directors who develop their own material. It's been a bit of a regression the past few years. We were just getting on to another form of uh, cinematic expression when, when we went into a deeply conservative social climate. It took a step back, you know, to um, reconsolidate itself, and we went back to a very literary form of expression in the cinema, you know, which um, it was just breaking down, I think, in the next few years. That will change again. It'll go in a bit further forward. I think straight narrative films have always dominated because I think that is fundamentally what the mainstream audience wants: is they want cl clarity and narrative. I think that there, it will always be margin a marginalised thing for people who want something that's more abstract. I had already started to work outside that literary form before the regression happened. <laughs> so I can't change. My way of thinking, that's the way I think about the cinema, that it's, uh, I think that cinematic expression is, can some, I don't think of it as a complex thing at all. I think it's a way of looking at things. Yeah, I think Nicholas Rogue's films are all about people's perception of what's happening from inside the mind, as it were, and the way thought processes work and, and the way People, people's minds flip from one thing to another. They're right at the root of things. I don't think I've ever resolved the problem of identity and of who, who people really are. I think you can take extreme risks with narrative. I hate stories that you know in the first five minutes how they're going to end. But at the same time, I think that it's got to be clear and it's got, there's got to be a very powerful narrative at the basis of any films. But that's true of Nick's work, too. There's always a very strong, very clear narrative. He may tell it in a Baroque way. We give ourselves away with our work. You know, that's our only form of really, truly communicating is through work and through action. <laughs> I like the idea of making films that have a subjective viewpoint as opposed to an objective viewpoint, i.e. you see what's going on inside somebody's head, physically. About eight hours of school. The whole point about that film was a film called Paper House. To do a movie where nothing happened, but everything happened, in that, in that all that happened was that you were looking at a little girl who got sick and went to bed, but in fact, inside her mind, there was these appalling things going on that weren't supernatural, but were psychological. Right now, you're all right. Go away! Anne! What are you doing? Darling! Anna! Anna! It takes a 
long time to make a film, and it's quite hard work. But I know that I always think that um, they'll love this one. <laughs> the studio tends to find its own material, you know, and offer that material out to filmmakers, but, um, which either the material they've offered me hasn't been something I've wanted to spend a year of my life doing, or, and the material I've found and what it's spent the year of their life doing. But there's still room for the independent filmmaker, although it's getting much more difficult.